possible. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Maureen Pugh. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, and it is my pleasure tonight to stand and support my colleagues on this side of the House in opposing this Healthy Homes Guarantee Bill number two in its second reading. And this does not mean that I am opposed to healthy homes, sir, no. In fact, what it means from this side of the House is that we support healthy homes, but in a very practical sense and that is achievable and does not impose added cost to the tenants of those homes. Mr Speaker, I do note that this bill was referred to the Government Administration Select Committee on the 4th of May 2016, and that may explain why it's fallen behind and um, hasn't kept up with where the Government actually is at the present point in time. But it is clear that things have moved substantially in the intervening period, thanks to this national-led Government. Under this progressive and responsible government, substantially more is being done already than this bill, be, bill seeks to deliver. We are already doing it. We have already insulated 30,000 state homes. We are walking the talk with our own housing stock as responsible landlords, more than any government in our country's history. We have subsidised ceiling and underfloor insulation for 290,000 private sector homes through the Warm Up New Zealand programme. And further to that, Mr Speaker, changes to residential tenancies sees the retrofitting of insulation for a further 180,000 homes by the 1st of July 2019, not 2023, as proposed by this bill. Altogether, sir, 500,000 homes, 10 times what the previous Labor government achieved. That amounts to a total investment in social um, uh, in, to insulation so of $116 million for Housing New Zealand stock and $450 million for Warm Up New Zealand grants, a total of $566 million invested into insulation. Bless you. Another programme underway, Mr Speaker, is the Healthy Homes Initiative, led by the Minister of Health, the Honourable Jonathan Coleman. We have seen 11 DHBs across New Zealand refer for insulated drapes, floor coverings, beds, ventilation and heating for 2,838 people. And this programme on its own is credited with the 45 per cent drop in rheumatic fever since 2012. We know that investing in warm, dry, safe homes is absolutely essential and vital to the health of Kiwis, especially their children. And we will continue to ensure that they get our support. The difference between the two programmes, Mr Speaker, is that one funds insulation, the other funds a bit of insulation, but a whole lot of bureaucracy, and diverts funds into inspectors, who will then be able to go into people's homes to take the temperatures and that, sir, will most certainly increase the costs. And I know one couple, and, I, and um, I've had this debate with them in the past, because one likes their room really warm, another one likes their room very cool. So how is an inspector going to equalise that problem for that couple? Um, whether they'll, they'll, and whether they're te them as tenants wish to um, pull the drapes, whether they turn on the heater or close the doors, is entirely up to them, not a temperature inspector. Mr, um, Mr Little, when he introduced his bill earlier tonight, called it symbolic. And it is symbolic. It's symbolic of the approach that will most certainly increase costs for tenants. There is no way that you can increase the bureaucracy in something like this without imposing costs. That will inevitably be passed on to the tenants. That in turn will put um, pressure on already pressurised housing stock. But we are focused, sir, and determined that that will not happen. 
In fact, Mr Speaker, this government actually did consider a full warrant of fitness scheme back in 2013 and trialled that experiment on its own Housing New Zealand uh, Corporation stock. But the cost of that programme was back then $100 million a year. So it was very clear that that cost would have had to have been passed back onto the tenants. And so that programme, sir, was abandoned for that reason. I'd like to make, um, quote from the New Zealand Property Investors a Federation Executive Officer, Andrew King, who noted during the discussion on this bill, we have been saying for years that a full rental property warrant of fitness actually isn't in the best interest of tenants. It is expensive to administer and comply with and would no doubt be added to over time with the potential to take some properties out of the rental pool. That is not an outcome that this side of the House supports. And, and as a result, sir, um, we will not be increasing costs to our tenants. We've already moved to provide hundreds of thousands of tenants uh, with greater protection through strengthened uh, protection. We've provided for smoke alarms that are estimated to save an average of three lives a year. But we are in agreement that Kiwi families deserve warm, dry, safe homes. No one disagrees with that but we must do it in a way that does not have negative consequences. Um, Mr Speaker, in a former role, and I note tonight the last three speakers from this side of the House have all had um, the same role as former mayors, and we would have all had um, participation with the um, Crown Entity, the Energy uh, Efficiency and Conservation Authority, ECA, and I um, know from my own personal experience in dealing with ECA uh, through their very enthusiastic advocates, um, my one Mike, I'm sure he will, um, he will remember coming to the West Coast. Um, but ECA, sir, um, promotes these uh, packages that support home insulation. And there is um, very clear data now that supports the home insulation packages. And, and um, the biggest beneficiaries of those are the health sector, with absolute reduced numbers of um, admissions for respiratory illnesses. And that is a direct result of insulating homes and making them warmer and drier. That data is absolutely stark, so there's no question about the impact of that. But ECA um, is actually running those programmes on behalf of the government. And the Healthy Home Programme that I've referred to earlier offers the grants for insulation and retrofitting um, to make those homes warmer, drier and healthier. Um, and so as a matter of um, interest to um, people who hear us talking about these insulation programmes but may not know how to actually access them, the grants are available for homeowners and landlords. And grants of 50% of the cost of insulation are now available for low income earners as well, and landlords with low income tenants. So these Warm Up New Zealand Healthy Homes grants are limited, sir, and will finish by the end of June next year. So I do encourage um, not only the tenants um, to encourage their landlords, but people on uh, low incomes and um, tenant, uh, landlords with low income tenants to make the best advantage of these um, grants as they are available right now. If the house was built before to the year 2000, and if uh, you own the home and have a community services card, or your tenant has a community services card, then these grants are available, but also if you have high health needs. Uh, you are also eligible for these insulation packages. Um, and if you have, um, simply have high health needs, yes, um, yes, in summary, um, <laughs> the, um, my colleague Matt Ducey earlier tonight, he um, gave a very inspiring speech and used the rugby analogy of looking at the scoreboard and that's what I'd like to finish on, Mr Speaker, looking at the scoreboard, and the numbers do speak for themselves, sir. 500,000 homes insulated, 
$566 million invested in warm, dry, safe homes. Numbers speak for themselves. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. The ayes have it. A party vote is called for. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 58 votes opposed.